ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this series, which, uh, which as you can see, that we have expanded again, even though this bit separates it, but we only took um, Aksu, which has been renamed Baruka, back to its original Tokarian name. You know, my mother was from Baruka, and therefore I inherited a claim, and that's how we got it, through a claim. And speaking of claims, we are currently fabricating another one. In a year's time, we will have a Kusam, which is the uh, Uyghur name of that area. But when we take it back, it'll be reverted back to its old name, Kucha. It's just part of the uh, longer, what do we call for the lack of a better term, national liberation for all of the territories that belongs to our culture. We're simply just dried on them out. Even though, as you can see, Miran and... Uh, oh, excuse me. Miran and Kumtag are, do have Uyghur culture, which I will promote that culture one day, not now. That'll be in a much later period, <laughs> whenever we have a lot of time to promote our culture just to spread to our culture because these two lands here long ago were traditionally Tokarian or Kushin or Kuchian or in this case we're, we're going to separate by context all areas of Karasher there that would be Kuchian part of Tokarian down here is Karania named after not only our dynasty but it's also the name of our language down here even though in Crusader King's context, everybody speaks the Arshikuchi language. That's Tokarian B, as it's also known as old. Kuchian. And since we are now in the early medieval era, that means you, there is room to add one tradition, but we can't do that because I'm not as prestigious as I used to be. I've been more piety in such of these days. And as I am 50 years old, and I'm sure later in my 50s I'm going to start feeling poor. So, I got a few reasons to live. For now. But now, the question of this episode has, has been a bit of succession. We know that in this election I chosen Arya Kose to be the next one to inherit. But, however, there is a problem with that, since this is a male preference. We know that my sons will be inheriting some of the lands, including her capital, while she only inherits the title. So that's something I do not want to experiment. Don't want to do something that's worth experimenting on. And that is, what happens if you are the sole ruler that's voting for this one person, who's not going to inherit any of the counties, but will inherit the duchy? That is a question for you viewers, for those who play Crusader Kings for a living, who uses elective and just wonders, well, what happens? But for me, I think it's something that I don't want to experiment on. So, as a contingency plan, like a better term, of my nine children, I have one, two, three, four, five, six daughters, and three sons. And it's only the sons that are going to inherit the lands. And I have six of them, so... If I were to disinherit all three of my sons, that means each and every one of these female rules will get a piece of land. But I am only deciding based on skill and education since we're more martial intensive these days, since this is, again, part of the ongoing National Liberation Campaign for the uh, Kuchian people up here. We get all the way up there, and we may possibly fight a war of independence from Janga. It's another possibility when it when it comes to all this, when it's all said and done. So that's the main reason why I'm voting for her, because of her military education. Now as I look at the others, some are a bit more skilled, but we need someone that has good marshals. Someone can lead the armies. There is another who is a bit more skilled actually than then Arya Kosi. So, it might be Shiri, which we named it after uh, after my beloved wife of Havamna origin. 
Not to mention she's calm, trusting, and all that. But there is one last chance here. I mean, she's going for a learning education. Even if you were to change the diplomacy, that matters a little. And this is my daughter and this ward I'm currently raising. I only found out that she's humble and tempered. I'm like, oh, she could be virtuous. Giving her a martial education as she is bossy. And plus, this might be the attractive thing about it. She's robust, so she has a strong physique. A strong woman might be needed, so... I don't know what her education is going to be like, but I'm going to try my best to try to raise her. Also, need someone to have her study another foreign language. One second. Is there someone who is of a Sogdian or Havana origin? And preferably an older person, so there'll be little chance to have children. There's one. I just need you over here. So you can teach her the uh, East Iranian language. So you'll be turning 44. As you already had children of your own. But here's the deal. There's a reason why I brought you here. You should be turning 13 soon. Can you help her study the East Iranian language? So for now, as for my sons, my youngest, he's more interested in learning. He's interested in diplomacy, and then my youngest is more interested in learning. See, I can't have that, and I don't want them inheriting lands because I want, we want a strong ruler, both strong as in militarily and physical strength. So I may switch the vote to, uh, what's your name again? Sari, right, Sari. Well, as a contingency plan, we're going to disinherit him. But this is not going to be like this. Because that's frowned upon due to the amount of renown you would be spending. Instead, I'm going to ask you to take the vows. Which, fortunately, um, you do have a virtue. Calm. But deceitful and you want a learning education. I mean, it's, uh, and plus he's terrified of me. So, <laughs> that's another reason. And he'll gain the trait of Monk, which may not inherit titles and may not marry. And it'll cost you 350 piety, which I've been saving a lot of in the previous episode. So we ask you to take the vows, so we'll see what happens. He's terrified of me. My dear father, I will answer the call and serve the higher power. Thank you for setting me on this path to righteousness. I'm sure you'll serve Siddhartha well. Promise to the clergy. You're a Beku now. Will not inherit titles. So now I ask you to do the same thing. Might accept. You will accept. And that includes you too. He'll accept without having to use a hook on him. So none of my sons will inherit these lands. The future is female. There's your ropes. So, now here's the crazy part. Aryakose, the one who I'm voting for, will get Kroran. Maya will get Narubo, Shiri to Mira, Arjuna to Kumtag, Sari to Urabo, and Tati to Baruka. There is a possibility that I may um, disinherit a few more. 
But save that for later. Just wait a couple of years as I will try to help her with the martial education as I am of that education. So I must help her with that. And plus teach her East Iranian as it's a pretty important language. Oh, brother-in-law. What's going on? Ooh, you got Zaya to back you up. Alright. You're up against Zadoi and Yespi. Oh, that's a pretty big war that you got yourself into. This is a... You are on the offensive, right? And you want the claim of a county here. You know, it'll cost me some money, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to join that. See, I told you, you were never going to use that favor hook on me. I think y'all can handle it. I've become malnourished because of me being an apothecary. Now, due to me being malnourished, my health is starting to become poor now, so you may want to disherit a few of your daughters. I think the ones with the martial skills should be kept. Disgraceful. Plus, you're my seneschal, so I don't want to send you out to court. Just out of court, you might be still to have some use to it. But I think should I switch medicine focus? Will it be enough? No, it will not. It will not be enough. Oh boy. So that means that I knocked a few years out of my life now. Again, she's physically strong, but it's not going to increase her overall skills. She'll be turning 13 soon, and hopefully we'll get another event where I'll give her a trait, which could be good for her. So, would you rather have the young one, or one with slightly more experience to her name as far as age is concerned? But she already has irritable, so she's got anger issues already. She is ambitious, whereas for her, she is more virtuous, and a virtuous ruler is good for everybody, especially to the clergy. That would be good to get the clergy on your side. I've been cogitating on this, but I'm changing my vote. Sorry. It'll be the one. The Sari. That's our name of an Indian origin, obviously. Where it came from. Will not accept because... Destined for greater things. Okay. I guess she can stay. How about you? She will not accept. Plus, that hook was already used up. Okay. Arjuna, how about you? You're willing. Okay. That's good to know. I said, I gotta get them out of there. Because I would much prefer for the hair that I'm voting for to inherit everything. Off you go, then. And since I'm voting for you, you will hold Kumtag. Yikes. Alright, of course they will get Karan and Baruka. Seems like you're up to the challenge. Just to help you out a little, just in case.
Again, haven't decided. Depends on how her education will go at the very end. If she is better than Arya Kose, I'll down voting for her. If Arya Kose is somehow better than her or whatever her education was, then, and only then, Arya Kose will finally win. Anyways, as for the other daughters, Shiri, missed you there. You'll likely accept because you got a virtue. Even though you have a military education, you are much better skilled, but I feel that there's going to be someone better. So, okay. I also have Kroran and Urabo. Maya, to which she's not going anywhere. We'll have Narubo and Baruka. And Sari, the one I'm voting for, we'll have uh, Miran. And Tati will get Kumtag. I don't think I've made any investments to Miran other than the crop fields. So, gee, I don't know about that. She says, destined for greater things. We shall see. As her personality develops, she might change her mind. Keyword might. We are a pious family. But uh, but we only do but we only did that just to reduce the size of the of the immediate family here and their future families for those who are ruling the lands. But I'm convinced that your physical strength will be the ones to win out here. Well, it matters not anymore. But she's my court physician. In case something bad happens to me, you need one. Been here for 16 months. Yeah, you can come in. Might be of some use to you. And no, no mannequins. Insightful thinker. It's good for you. Again, maybe her personality will change if she gets a virtue or so that she'll be more convinced to take the vows. See another confederate partition. We want to split the lands evenly. We don't want it to favor over the other. That would be unfavorable to the one I am voting for. It's the younger ones that tend to be a lot more lucky. And my health's doing poor as my because I'm malnourished because of my. Uh, stress coping and living this ascetic lifestyle one would think me being a devout Buddhist oh not quite virtuous but still unless I wish to have a feast then maybe that'll get rid of my malnourishment getting all of Kashgar sounds like a good idea but I only want Kocha and you better make it so. And plus, that means it's a whole nother piece of territory for the daughters to inherit. But, we must do it. We must do it. But 
get out here. Let's get some distance away. So we'll defeat the army there. Capture the old man because he's unlikely to lead an army. And then after we have him dealt with, if we don't capture him, then we have to take the objective. Which it does have camel breeders and the Kizzo Caves. And the number one reason why is because of Kuchin music. And there's a reason why I have not presented Silk Road entertainers to anybody. Even though it would help us get a bit of renown. I'd rather wait and get the Kuchin ones instead. There's more value in that. I ain't long for this world, but... I ain't scared. Military strength is inferior compared to me. Let's move out. Better get this as quickly as possible. Six months. Keen eye. Sari seems to enjoy our latest feast immensely. Of all the things, she could not stop talking about the rich clothes and glittering gold she saw there. Greedy is a vice, but not a sin in our faith. But it does lower your diplomacy a bit, which isn't good to anyone. But hey, as part of our traditions, I will show her how to make friends at a feast. You should be gregarious. There's a good reason for that. Because under gregarious, you get to have monthly diplomacy lifestyle experience up and that is because of that cultural tradition of musical theorists she doesn't need to be greedy nor lustful if she was a bisexual like me talking about Ahsoka then then maybe I would have gone for lustful but I don't think she's that kind of person no I don't see her like that. We know you're in there, old man. When we get you out of your hiding hole, then war will be over. And if it's not over, then that means we have to take uh, Kucha. New war target. Nothing in this world is certain, especially in times of war. Naro claim of the legacy of Kushan has been no different. As this conflict is no longer against Santa Rosa Kanashev or my liege instead, it might be wise to reevaluate the situation. So now it's considered as a revolt. Serves our leech, but now um, I'll say my gold is still the same. His are still inferior compared to ours. We ain't scared. So he's still around, but he's no longer a war target now. One would think it must have realized of our higher goals of winning wars of national liberation for the Kuchian people. Kurayas and Kuchians will be together. One day. We did not capture him and it's because he's the... Uh, went over there in Marshall, so he's he's amongst the, the uh, Tashi there. 
we've captured this bishop, which you're not going to pay him? Not even his own? And four others. I'm sure there are others that wish to pay him. Which is better damn well. So they're going somewhere. But this would be an excellent opportunity to go take Kuchan now. Unfortunately, they're four levels higher. They improve defenses have defensive measures. Oh, that's why. The liege is the owner. So that's why the war target changed. He is the new owner of Kucha. And so therefore you are fighting against him. And he is mad about that. I understand now. I don't know. Skill-wise, even though she's not yet finished her education yet, but it seems it's even, but she might be slightly better than Arya Kose. So Sari will win out here. And I'm not going to change my mind. This is going to take a while longer, so you may want to bring allies over here. In fact, he's got none. His only allies actually within. That's just to prevent, you know, factionalism. That's what that is. You know, you're the one that gave me that cat. Actually, he has another cat. He once gave that cat to me. Mittens. And now we become enemies. Say, how would you uh, like to join this ongoing conflict? I mean, I know you're not doing anything. I just only need one ally along. Because you got more siege weapons. Because they have more men in arms than we do. And that is a bit problematic. He's still at war, so he can't be... Uh, can't be called into it. Although I can, it's just going to take a lot longer. The best gear. I'm inspecting some of my troops in the camps. I'll walk by some smiths who are in the middle of repairing some weapons and armor. Everyone says they work hard to ensure my war's outfit with the best gear. Their hard work shall not be in vain. I'm sure they're going to try to retake Karasha, buying time for an ally to get over here by... I mean, they'll be here in five months. My prowess skill ain't what it used to be. Especially that I'm malnourished. Oh, they're not... Yes, they are heading to Karasha to try to retake the area. But they don't have siege weapons, which will buy us time. But it's a race against time now. We just gotta star them out. Hey, where are you going? You got a war? No? That's, no, it's because they saw uh, the Uyghur army down there. Up there. So we'll take the objective then, and we'll deal with them soon. We'll have the defensive advantage. Now you got an uprising, a populist uprising. Well, I don't want to decline the call, so I'll accept it, but I'm in the middle of something. I got a very bad feeling about this. Ruckus in a cage. 
After the siege in the barony of Kulsan, two men specifically caught my eye after being captured as prisoners once they had finished practically fighting some of my levies of pitchforks and shovel. Glancing over them in the distance, I noticed two of them are grappling each other, supposedly fighting about an event that happened mid-siege before my soldiers had entered the castle walls. They asked me what was going on, one of the prisoner's guards informed me that uh, Big Look found out that Bonek has used the cow to steal some of his gold. On the other hand, Bonek claimed Big Look actually stole his gold, not the other way around. Whilst normally I wouldn't care about a situation like this, the two men are yelling and shouting into the night, and keeping a lot of my men awake. My goodness. I'll try to intimidate two of them in silence. Silence the two of you! Two of them are stared into being quiet. You two skilled in any way? No. So you two ain't worth a damn to me. To engage the enemy, we will probably win. We have more men at arms counter because we still have mixed units. Stand by. Be sure to invest in Miran. I want you to go get to military camps. It's all about the levies. Because again, she's going to be from Miran. She'll have to deal with the sisters, which, again, I'll soon change parts of succession. One second. Uh, not the generous dummy. She's more than likely to. Yes. But I want you to guarantee that you will become a nun. You will become a, a picture. Marital misery. As if I didn't already have too many problems on my hands, I also deal with my wife. There are things I always do, not to uh, do well enough, and new complaint every day. You would think she was doing her best to make my life a never-ending torment. Why do you hate me so? That's because she's an irrational blackguard, because she's arbitrary, she's a murderer, and she's possessed. You're a proper monk now. He's gone to Dong Huang. All right, so we know Maya isn't gonna become one. She's not gonna let this go. So she'll have to inherit this. So Sari will get Miran and Baruka. So the land will be split. And Baruka over there, I don't think it has any buildings. One, mud brick towers. And who knows where Kushan is going to. So that's what we know now. It's going to be either Kose, Maya, and Sari. Even though I could convince the others, but ambitious isn't going to work out here. And primary heir, even though if I were to take that off, she'd be willing to ask to take up the vows, but no. I feel she's worth something to educate on. She'll be turning 15 in a month. Give it one more year, and then let's hope for a good martial education. Or at least it'll be the same as her, but she'll be considered as a slight improvement over Ayakose. That's what I'm convinced. We have the objective, we just need to defeat the main army of our liege, which will be fighting up in the hills. So come with us. You got the light horsemen, plenty of them. He's got mountaineers, so they're skilled at hill mountain fighting.
across the battlefield. I say Alp Arslan on top of his horse. I always learn to try to get into position of the enemy to better understand how they think and how to prepare for their attacks. Or if Alp Arslan, I can't imagine anything past uh, any anything past being discussed by his religious views. Manichaeism is surely a plainly false religion. I stop to think. Should I keep trying to learn his image of the battle and use that against him? Or shut off any invasive religious thoughts? Listen, I'm getting too old for this. I will not stray into that heresy. Faith grows stronger. We wounded the commander. He's been healed. Captured one of the Baga tours. He'd make a very good chancellor. But he's poor and ailing, so it matters little. Unless you want to pay up. Seventy-nine percent war score. Less fort level. Okay, we'll take this area then. I don't think we need to go up to his capital. You are nothing but a bladdery doxy. Stressed. This is what I get for being diligent. But my time's about to end soon. So it's been settled then. Three of my daughters will inherit the lands that I own. And what will the fate of Kucha be? Who's it going to go to? That's another question that will soon be answered. Good rinse. Learned East Iranian. Very good. Very good. There is room for one more language you could learn. But what would she learn? That would be of some use to her. Feeling fine? Chaz Turkic would be another. Although we're still going to be living under our leech, but we feel that Shah's Turkic might be useful since that's their language. Got it. Now it's been renamed, not Kucha, Kuchi. I forget. Arshi Kuchi. Kuchi is the Tokaria name of this area. But now, who is it going to go to? Aryakose will have Kuchi. And that means she gets to have Kuchin music, the camel breeders, and the Kezal Caves, since it's now active again. Since it's under Buddhist rule now. And we have connected the, the Kuchin lands including Baruka. So, let's get this down straight. Kroran, Kumtag, and Kuchi will go to Ariakose. Narubo and Urabo, uh, Narubo and Urabo will go to Maya, and the heir, and the overall ruler, uh, will have Miran and Baruka. So she might be handicapped a bit if she wants to have all these lands back. So she has to deal with her sisters. This ain't over yet. So let's get moving and deal with this matter now. But in the meantime, 
get this under control. It would be too late to consider conversions now, but since, you know, she's gonna have Baruka Isari, I guess you might as well get to work on converting the faith over there. The Benevolent Guard. I'm expecting a town in my realm while visiting its market. I see a town guard gives some food and candy to a little girl in tattered calls. She thanks the guard before scurrying off. The poor child does not live in a good home, the guard clarifies one question. This is the least I could do. Ever since I met her, I check on her once in a while. As a parent, so, well, uh, I don't mean a gossip carelessly, but they're frankly horrible. Some people don't trust street, trust street urchins, but they're just children. A little candy can really make their day. Earlier that day, I heard some of the townspeople talk about this guard's generosity and kindness, as well as the cruel neglect of her parents. It seems this guard cares about the child is more like a parent to her than a real parent's. Hmm. I could use my authority to help you adopt her. But nevertheless, intervene in locals' lives for ten years. I just want to show that I am a ruler who cares about the others. I've been trying to change my ways, but clearly it's starting to get at me. I'm outnourished. And there will be a day that I would leave this cruel world. Monthly piety per night sounds good, but court physicians should be more effective on treating my the wounds of my men. That would be better. Itchy. I keep feeling it itchy a certain spot today for no reason as far as I can tell, but I scratched it, but the itch would come back. So itchy. So scratchy. Ah! This is why I can never meditate. Thank you for making me the marshal again. Sorry that I rebelled against you. Wait a minute, rebelled against you? Does that mean I've done a criminal act? Now that I thought about it? No, you have not done a criminal act. already been exposed long ago just out of retaliation do we have an organizer yes get them moving faster I'll switch commanders by the time we arrive on the scene You could gain weight, or shun food and become famished, and that'll... I think I would do that, to say, her education is finished, in fact, is about to be finished. We will see the final result, because I'm thinking she would be the one, not Arya Kose to lead. Let's see it. With the coming of uh, age, my tuition of Sari is at an end. For the longest time, I was hoping that good tutelage would be enough to teach Sari intricacies of warfare. I was naive, she only developed basic understanding of Sari. But she has learned the essentials of managing an army. And I hope that the rest will come with experience of logistic. And so she's a tough soldier like everybody else. But compare and contrast. She is actually a slight improvement over our cause. So, you're the chosen one. Not to mention you're physically strong. We'll be 
there soon. I'll switch commanders in a moment. I'll lead back. We'll be there in time. Let's go get him. He's got a better army commander. Who is? This man. They took my nephew, you bastard! We're gonna rescue him. Because he's a prisoner of war now. Nope. They released my nephew out of prison. The war is lost. So rebelling counties have become an independent realm as its ruler. Oh, we're standing down now. Because they took the capital. That's what happened. <sighs> well, anyways. I feel that I've done all I can. Oh no, that applies to me, and I'm not going to be around for long, so don't develop capital. So, just to reiterate, she is going to be the ruler of Koran in Miran and Baruka, to be exact. The land had been developing for some time, but... I want those military camps, the height tents, to be finished right now. So we're sending you there. Which, in turn, will make it finished by August. This is just to help my daughter, you know. That's the reason. Now, anyways. Sure you don't want her? Well, just in case, I'll move her under a house, put her under house arrest. And she's rather important. Whereas you can go die. As far as I'm concerned. Mind and body. The further I delve in my studies, the more apparent the link between mind and body becomes. Too much worry can make you sick, and the mind is no stronger than its vessel. I need a healthy outlet to cope with the various strains of ruling. I've read about the benefits of vigorous movement as well as journey to soothe my nerves. Athletic is small health boost. Maybe that can get rid of malnourished. Or become a journaler. I just have wide vocabulary instead. That's a 50 50 shot of anything. Come on. Let me see. I would love to abstain vices Nervasa again. I would love to do that. Try to go for a run. Gain athletic. But the health is still poor. No matter what you do, you have to accept the fact. But in this case, you should go out to for a run. Now that you're athletic. Go for a run. Go, 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 go. It stops and it's not there. This could be the last time. Must prepare myself while I still have the time. My abstinence from vices during Vatsa. I shall do it again. One would think that I would love to get rid of that raffle train and turn it to calm, just to show that I truly changed my ways before my very end.
goes my good chance. Huh? Fine. Should be starting soon. Yes. Has our. I mean, you sold us on a previous episode. So hopefully I can reform, become calm before the end of my life. If not, then. Oh well. It's just one of the last things I want to do before I leave this earth. Hide tents are finished. But you know what? Keep developing, Miran. It'll be fully developed in 47 days. Can't find nothing. One issue, if I want to call it that, during Vasa, is that sometimes it's always easy to buy food and drink. Just as many people try to cut it down and accept the just during this time, even shopkeepers and merchants will cut down on how much of such indulgent products they sell. Unfortunately, I'm having difficulty buying enough of these products to serve for some upcoming functions and gatherings I'll be hosting. Now, given that I'm not a Beku, it isn't certainly a problem if I want to buy some of these things, within reason. Especially if I, if it would help me with my various duties and responsibilities as a Yopko. I have agreed to abstain from vices this year, or at least reduce them, so perhaps it's an opportunity to put me to into practice and do what I say I do. As a... Hmm. Oh, it's pretty even. So I'll say yes. Perhaps I'll wait until later to buy these things. Well, brother, you just got captured again. You just have the bad luck. Now, promote culture. How long would that take? Eight years to, to develop and your stewardship skill. Because we wish to turn this back into um, the Crow Run. You know? Just seen it. You know, just out of curiosity. It would be called uh, Narubo, but if I were to diverge that culture, like say, like say I diverged mine, even on the cultural head of everybody there, <laughs> like I would have named that, but I can't type it on a keyboard with that accent mark of the umlaut up there. Basa ends. So I will donate new saffron robes, as is tradition. Oh, I did what I can. Oh! Arjuna drank herself to death. That's my old half-sister. In fact, that is the eldest one of, of my father's. Drank herself to death and she was irritable and she had was into comfort eating. Oh, I feel bad. Bad, bad, bad. So I stayed for. Pretty much accepted the fact that I'm gonna die. The question is, when? I 
I, th I was about to say, I think that I uh, may have gotten a bug here. Regarding the Vasa thing. That, um, that I did this thing and uh, can't do anything. So maybe until when this character finally dies, then then maybe just maybe um, we have it at soon. But again, she's the breadwinner here. Because she's got the skills. I'll let that rugged walking stick break. Because there are far more important things to take care of. Maybe one day you'll be like the Buddha himself. My sons and a few daughters have become wandering ascetics. One would think. Oh, and she's kind of athletic. Fornicator. Play right that car. Leading members of the local Indian community have presented me a most valuable gift today. A simple but elegant manuscript filled with literature written in one of their languages. They believe such a work of literary and aesthetic value will demonstrate their appreciation for my recent efforts to reinforce relations with them. They're not wrong. The gift is greatly appreciated. I'll become the owner of a scroll from India. Look at this. A modest but beautiful scroll which contains some drawn art in a traditional South Asian style. As well as some writings in the South Asian language. Perfect as a full house decor for reading. If one knows how to read it. As one of the major centers of culture, learning and religion along the Silk Road, the people of India had, have had long had a history a long history of producing many wonderful texts ranging from informative pieces to deep reflections to moving tales of yore. Plus one learning, a bit of prestige up, and slightly slight increase of monthly lifestyle experience. Thank you very much. Might as well get it off. That stick's gonna break. I'm not gonna put my money. It's not worth saving. These two are worth saving. Now she knows the Shah's Turkic language, in addition to East Iranian. So, so she'll be alright when it comes to communicating with other people, especially for her being uh, gregarious. My brother died in captivity. They took my son. He was in Dung Huang. But it no longer concerns me anymore. Maybe I better get rid of those health benefits just to make sure that I will pass away sooner. Because I pretty much accepted the fact that I will pass soon. There's nothing you could do to stop it or to improve your health. And I like to die remaining malnourished. As my daughter will turn 18 soon. And then, um, long other things. So, just focusing on wealth. Just to make a little more money that she'll be inheriting. That's something worth saving it for. Not quite fully under control yet, but I am happy to be the owner of this. Actually, there is one thing. Hang on. Nasir Kostra. 
For years, I heard about a Muslim holy man known as Nasir Khosrau Tahir, who travels from rather realms seeking shelter. Though a great poet and scholar, famous throughout the Islamic world for his achievements, he was a target of sectarian, sectarian rulers. He never found a proper home, until now. I have received news that he has arrived in the Badakhshan region, and made a home for himself there, in the rugged isolated parts of Wakhan in particular. It appears he's found himself a friend and patron in the righteous erudite uh, Samantha Kanaka, who appreciates the spiritual and philosophical insights of Nasir Khosrow. To imagine such that a famous patriot now graces his presence in remote part of the world, now Nasir Khosrow wishes to spread the light of Islam there. Can he succeed? Interesting to hear. Will he be able to assist his friend and mentor bringing the light of Islam to Badakhshan? Only time will tell. He's not he's a genius, poet. Parsi, also known as Persian, is what they're referring to. Not the Parsis of India. You won't make use of this. Oh, give it to somebody. Uh, how about him? Present skilled Cochin entertainers. It'll cost you 50 gold. I mean, when you do skilled Silk Road entertainers, they give you a renown of 10. Present skilled Cochin entertainers gives you 25 renown. So he'll like it. Give it to him. When a powerful Yapko like myself wants to make a great impression of another member of the elite, basic gift of Silk. Gold or other luxuries do not suffice. After all, I rule over Kuchi, a famed city for of pleasure and leisure. There is even a greater gift I can give. Across the prosperous lands of Eurasia and the so-called Silk Road, it is common for elites to gift entertainers like musicians, dancers, acrobats, and even beautiful slaves and courtesans to give further visual and even pleasurable twists to entertainment. Kuchi in particular is famed for such entertainment throughout the Silk Road. I've decided to present Red Dharma, a troop of skilled entertainers and slaves from Kuchi. They will become part of his court and serve him well for years to come. A gesture of diplomatic goodwill to Red Dharma. So he gets all of these benefits, but I get the bit of renown and prestige. As I stated before, start saving up some more money, then, um, mm -hmm. and then, um, my daughter will inherit all the wealth, and then she'll be a mighty ruler of our people, and she will be the one to unite the rest of our people who are still being ruled. By those people who hybridized with our culture and among other things to, to whom they may concern. I have enclosed the incriminating documents. Let me reiterate that you are not to speak of this to anyone. Not even my leech is aware that this exists and it must stay that way. But who am I pass up the gift from the spy master? Oh, is that so? There's no money in this. There is one. I was about to say you better start paying it, but no, it doesn't have it anymore.
So apparently I cannot do this because I'm a bit bugged with not already playing activity ever since I did the Vasa. And, um, and that would mean that... Well, I'm just going to have to wait for this character to die. Of poor health. I've taken off that health benefits of the medicine focus and focus on wealth. Unless somebody wants to put me out of my misery. Unless I get really stressed. That's it. Here's another way to reduce your health. How about you get more stressed than you really should? Because I feel it's about that damn time anyway. It's about time for Sari to begin her rule. So last chance, all of you. You sure you don't want to take the vows? I can't give you off the hook. Ariakosa, would you like to... Of course not, because you're ambitious. This is just the last chance. I know she'd be willing, but to me, she would be the best one, most qualified. But she will only have two Karmatanyas for herself, Miran and Baruka. And if she wants all of this back, she must fight for it. Now, I may not have this... She may not have the stewardship skill like mine, so... She might be rather limited on how many counties she can actually rule. So, it would be of her utmost priority to unite the lands around Lapnor again before going on an offensive against Karasha. But first, of late, my courtesy to avoid me at all costs. I hear whispers they consider me too stubborn, too inflexible, too unpromising. But that just means I rule with a firm hand. It doesn't mean that I'm a monster, does it? I don't need love, just obedience. So, I'm near dying, and I have accepted my um, appending death. As this health is severe penalty is what happens when you get stress level 2. This is something you do not want for a typical ruler. A noted scholar was living nearby. It was known to have possessed an ancient scroll with its decipherable writing. He says he has a feeling that it is a hoax. However, there are those I know who claim that it is actually a dark artifact capable of found magic and that it should be destroyed. Destroy that scroll. Could be dangerous. At least that's the last pious thing I'm ever going to do. So now... I await Nirvana despite my raffle trait. I try to be a good person. But... What can we do? And this is your time. Sorry. Wait a second. You got a lover? Meanwhile, a smuggling ring arrested. There had been a smuggling ring operating in Kumtag for some time. However, officials there were unable to find any useful information on it that would lead to these criminals arrests. Recently, however, my officials managed to capture one of the smugglers who turned out to be an extreme coward. Even a casual mention of torture was enough to turn this man to a quivering mess, and he told the authorities everything. The members of the smuggling ring have been all but caught, and justice told them. All in all, it was great success. That man's cowardice is our key to victory. Well done. So, who's your lover? Really? I mean, I'd learned of the secret, but it's not something worth blackmailing on except him. Last chance. Thank you. Now my daughter will get to inherit all that wealth.
In fact, since you're 30 years old right now, and I know who your lover is, but... You know what? If you like my daughter so much, why don't you marry her? If that is her true love, then I don't know what is. Just accumulate your wealth and wait for my impending death. 57 years old. And uh, my father was 56, so I lived a year longer than he did. I'm just content with my impending death. Oh, that can't be good. They're coming for Baruka. Oh, that is, that's my daughter's inheritance. Despite our differences, I am helping you out with this issue. I don't like this at all. I mean, they have every right to, because their culture has the ability to declare Cassis, County Casas Valley Wars, whereas we do not. And we know that area is part of the Kashka. Enemy ally joined the war. Oh, hell. Well, we're gonna put up a fight no matter what. Station yourself here. Fortunately, there, there is an area that does have a bit of defender advantage. But what's doubly unfortunate is we do not have the Mots Innovation, but we are exposed to that. So stand by in Kuchi, wait for the Saka to come, and uh, we'll have them dealt with. Wait for the army of my liege to enter this area, which they're going to be on their way to Havana, while we're going to be defending Baruka. Move up a little. Maybe not. Hold your ground. For more levies. This is for my daughter. I fear that they're going to be together. And there's no way we'll be able to beat them all. And my daughter in there, when she starts leading an army, I doubt that she'll have the experience to... How to deal with a large army like that. But there are better ideas. And even if we lose Baruka, it... As he was figuring out his plans, he just died here. So, two years longer than this one. Yabko Asuk has left this world at 58 years of age. 58 years of age. He died of natural causes. An old man, he lived a long, fulfilling life. Sounds like a better eulogy than what was his father given to him. So, as we know about Asuk, he was dreaded, he was distinguished. He was a devoted servant, fought in nine wars, four offensive wars and five defensive ones, including this one that's ongoing. And now, Yab Gassari ascends to the throne. Some fear that the accession of a woman to the throne might be a symptom of uncertain times to come. So 
Matty, the old one, is um, smarts than me. So, there's Maya, who is currently ill, but she'll be fine. And there's Arya Kose, who is going to be the heir for now. Failed to realize that her father's orders, this is not a matrilineal marriage. More reasons of why to get rid of her when we deal with this infighting, but there is no time to be doing any infighting now. This stick's about to break, but to make it up for we have this scroll from India. And also this box. Gallant, so she has the prowess to reduce the risk of commanding armies. But you know what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm actually going to end this episode. I'm going to actually cut this short than usual. Going to cut this episode shorter than usual. Just something we don't often get. So, so for the end of this episode, I will say that. Um, that we will finally have a female ruler, as promised. And we could finally do all these things again, now that we have a new ruler. But in that next episode, um, here's what the future plan is going to look like. Vijaya is going to be a problem. They got allies, they have superior strength compared to us. There's no way we can defeat them unless we get a few lucky victories. But if we're going to accept the fact that Baruka would be lost, then that means I'm going to have to take those lands from my sisters that I would have to deal with. So we have to take Kroran, Narubo, Kumtag. Must unite the Kroranian lands before we move northwards. And then into Karasher and Tokson. And then we will fight for our independence, and it would be most wise to join Vijaya, so that way we can get Baruka back from within without having to fight um, Dharma directly, which I've been against that idea. So knowing it's going to go to Kashgar, since, since he claims that Baruka is his land, whereas that's mine by an inheritance. So, we will deal with whatever matter it'll be. So, we hope you people will see this next episode. We just have big plans. Whether if this war is worth fighting for, but fighting against my sisters is something that is worth fighting for, just to unite the territories. I cannot hold all seven, but, so we know lose one, gain all the others, and then move up to take two more of these. I mean, you can't usurp it off of him because um, I only have two out of three that's required this money, and cannot usurp a title from someone who considers your faith to be hostile or worse while they control any of the digital lands. Basically, we just have to take them all out. And then... Fight for independence away from Junga. Join Vijaya so they don't take away further of our lands. We would rather be living under the rule of Buddhists rather than Manichaeans. That would be the compromise. So we hope you people will join us and tune into the next episode. But until then, so long for now.